International ICT Council, members of the International Development Partner Community, joining us by Zoom, Dr. Paris Liaoyi, Chairman of our Science Portfolio. I also acknowledge Mr. Antonio Garcia from the IDB, who is joining us on Zoom as well. Mr. Mike Saunderson, Operations Manager, Traffic Management Unit of the National Works Agency. My senior directors in the ministry, ladies and gentlemen, members of the, the press, good morning all. Yesterday, Minister Vaz spoke with us from Parliament, outlining the strategy we have for the full implementation of the national broadband and taking us to the last mile. We will need a whole of country approach, as he pointed out to us public sector, the private sector, because this is a Jamaica program. It's not a government program, it's a program so that we can reestablish our leadership. We're not accustomed to being followers in, in, in Jamaica. Just look at our great Usain Bolt. We, we lead, and when we do well, we do very well. So today, we're going to give you some more information. Anister will address, address us. And we implore the media, our partners, as we educate Jamaica about what is national broadband, its value, and its implications for the development of our economy and Jamaica taking its place regionally and of course internationally. So without keeping you, I will invite Mr. Saunderson to make the first presentation. Um, morning everyone. Thank you, PS. Um, you know, I, I spent the whole night last night trying to prepare for the, the um, 100 day ICT action plan, only to find that on the agenda it says the broadband initiative. So I realize there's still some cross conversation taking place between the two initiatives. So I've modified the presentation a little bit to speak a little bit about the, um, the 100 day ICT action plan and also the, the broader picture of the broadband initiative. So the broadband initiative consists of two two components. One is the immediate set of actions to deal with the um, COVID pan um, pandemic, and another set of actions to deal with the medium to long term to really take Jamaica into the future, all right? And the, I'm gonna go over first with the 100-day with the um, ICT action plan. All right, so the situation is that in Jamaica now, because of the, the pandemic, there are difficulties being experienced by many Jamaicans all over Jamaica. They have students, teachers in rural communities having difficulty accessing online educational content and making it very difficult for them to continue their education. You have the health sector also having challenges collecting real-time data from our ports, our airports, health centers, hospitals, and this is all across Jamaica having a problem. Even the government himself is having difficulty coordinating government response, COVID responses across many public sector agencies. And a large portion of the population in rural, in rural communities not able to use online um, services. So that is really the, 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 the summary of the situation. But I'm sure there's some other stuff that other Jamaicans are experiencing that is not captured in those statements. So the, the, the 100 day ICT action plan, as I said before, is primarily geared towards responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. The main project component is that the government will build out of a national um, free-to-air digital television network 
um, and that is to reach all practically 90% of Jamaicans have a, a TV set and they get their news um, from a television set. And so it's important for us to have the ability to reach people in their home. And the best way to do that is to use digital um, television um, um, technology. So the government, through the PBCJ, will roll out a national free, free to air digital television network. The second component is a rolling out a national fiber optic communication backbone. And that when we say national, we really mean national. It means that the fiber optic cable will touch every parish capital and come back to Kingston. The third component is to expand public Wi-Fi in public spaces to ensure that those communities that have no um, infrastructure like fiber can access the internet through public Wi-Fi. And the fourth, uh, uh, and that last, is to provide, provide internet service to schools without internet. So we're prioritizing connecting those schools, which I think is about two, 320 schools that are now currently without internet that we need to connect right away. Um, the technologies, we're, we're going to use a wide range of technologies. Um, fiber optic transmission systems, um, fixed wireless broadband, um, Wi-Fi, and satellite. I'm sure you must have seen and heard uh, in the media recently. Um, recent developments where a few, I think about 100 schools have been connected using satellite. All right, just a quick brief overview in terms of what, why we want to go free um, to air digital television. As I said before, over 85% of the Jamaican household get their information via television set. Um, the current government broadcasting system with, with a single channel, and so the coverage is very small, so we need to expand the coverage. Um, the digital transmission system is able to do multiple channels of, multiple channels of um, information on a 24-7 um, basis. The status of that project is that we have finished our field surveys and site assessments in terms of the, the communication tower sites. The site level design is completed and the equipment specification tender documents are being prepared. Uh, we're expecting the system to be rolled out sometime early um, in July of next year. And this is also a picture that shows the, where the communication towers will be located. Um, across the country. All right, the other major component is, is, uh, is rolling out a national fiber optic communication backbone. And what, what that simply means is that you need to have fiber optic cables running, connecting all, all across Jamaica um, to, to enable high speed data um, services to various government agencies. Um, we have been very fortunate that we have had um, good response from the private sector. I would say private sector, I mean private owners of fiber optic cables. The government has received a donation of almost 650 kilometers, 650 um, kilometers of fiber optic cables from the cable TV industry and the toll roads. I would say the cable TV industry, we're talking about the two major cable companies and um, 34 small rural cable operators, as well as the two major toll roads operators. Um, the works have started in this area. We have started to splice the fiber cables together and start testing. We have actually tested from Kingston to Santa Cruz um, at a bandwidth of 10 gigabit, so we know the system works. Right? So the cables are being spliced as we speak. Um, the national fiber um, optic communication backbone that we're building now, as I said, is for the COVID-19 response. And that is to, really, to enable all the COVID-19 response across government to be more efficient. The status of that project was splicing and testing, as I just mentioned, the cables between uh, Morant Bay and Montego Bay. We expect to finish that when, with early part of January. And so we'll start to put data on those links. So the, the parish councils from Morant Bay to Montego Bay will be able to communicate with central government. Uh, this shows the, the blue lines shown uh, going around the country is actually existing cables um, not new cables that have to be installed, so existing cables that the government have access to that we can connect to create this national backbone that we're talking about. The, the, fiber, the fiber backbone will also support the rolling out of um, public Wi-Fi hotspots um, in areas that we couldn't reach before. Uh, right now we have 13 hotspots and they're primarily in the urban areas across the country. 
by having a national fiber backbone, you're able to now extend the, the, the Wi-Fi hotspots into deep rural um, communities and enable a lot more Jamaicans to have access to the internet. Um, so the Wi-Fi hotspots, we expect over the next six months um, to add, to move from 13 to at least 30. Um, the good thing about it is that we have two programs, two ICT programs, major ICT programs that's running simultaneously, which is the, the Jamaica Eye Project, which in, um, see the installation of cameras. Those infrastructure that support the cameras can also support the installation of the Wi-Fi equipment. So it, it costs the cost um, tremendously and also accelerate the implementation. So the connection strategy is, is basically, as I as mentioned, using certain types of technology and targeting certain areas. The areas we want to target are communities with cable TV networks. Those communities that have cable, rural cable operators, we expect to have fiber in those areas. And so those homes and businesses and schools will be connected by fiber cables. The communities without cable TV operators, um, we expect to use wireless um, broadband um, infrastructure to connect those, those government agencies and homes and, and, and um, businesses. The open space, of course, will be dominated by Wi-Fi um, hotspots. Deep rural, which we have already started, is to use um, satellite technology. So we expect some short-term benefits. One, we expect to improve the Jamaica, Jamaica's emergency response to future natural disasters as um, COVID. Um, two, we want to increase online business marketplace and improve efficiency all across Jamaica. We want to expand the delivery of government services in rural communities. And we want to facilitate access to distance learning and internet in schools. Um, there's, a, there's a project we're now doing in um, between Tivoli, Denham Town, um, Kingston High, and St. Andrew Technical. We were connected for these schools by fiber, and we're using one source of internet to feed all these schools, and it has been um, very successful. And lastly, we want to enable improvements in data collection and contact tracing for the health, health sector. So that pretty much covers the 100-day ICT action plan. Uh, the national broadband infrastructure, which is the, 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 the medium-term um, um, initiative, seeks to now um, implement a national underground fiber optic cable infrastructure, which is different from what we're doing. What we're doing now with COVID, part of the infrastructure is underground, and a good portion of it is overhead. So um, the next effort is really to see us taking the infrastructure in a, in a different direction, going underground and extending it further and further into the interior of the country. Um, phase one, we we'll, um, start with um, Negril along the North Coast Highway to Port Antonio. Um, a part of this project is already underway. The, the section of Arb um, Arborview to Port Antonio, the infrastructure is already going, in, is, is actually being installed as part of the road projects. So by the time you finish phase one, you'd have had almost three quarters of the island um, completed. So phase one would include the, the Negril to Port Antonio, Port Antonio to Arborview. The blue line represents existing fiber owned by the government. Right? And of course, we have the east-west toll road extension that also includes the fiber infrastructure going in along the toll road. So we're not starting from, from zero. Right? We have, in terms of the infrastructure side, we have some infrastructure that we can leverage and get, and get us off the ground very quickly. Um, phase two, we'll see was using the, the railway, railway rights of way to install the underground fiber optic cable along the, the, the railway rights of way. Now, the railway rights of way start from downtown Kingston, which has the highest commercial. So those, those businesses that want to have access to fiber to communicate across the country, it will be easily accessible from downtown. And a, a portion of it will go to crossroads and up into New Kingston. But as you see, the, the railway provi provides us a very good um, route because it, it cuts into the interior of the country. The railway stations are a natural hub, communication hub. Each of these railway stations um, are within communities that are reachable by road. So it, the, 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 um, the railway station will become sort of the anchor. Um, I'm trying to find a word, the anchor. Um, institution for ICT development. So 
the, the East Railway Station now, basically, is a, give us an opportunity to branch off in any direction to any community. And that's what makes this very important. So the, the railway um, fiber infrastructure will be considered the primary fiber infrastructure. And that's phase one. Um, phase three will, be, will see the, the, um, the extension from Williamsfield into Negril, and that will actually close and other stuff, the, the railway would also be affected from, from Spanish Town to Linstead, Spanish Town to Albany. All those other railway sections will be you now be, be part of part three. So if you look at the map, what you're seeing, what we're trying to achieve is that there, there are several rings that you can, um, what we'll call fiber rings, that give us redundancy across the network. So um, at the end of the day, what we really want to achieve is that we have a, an open access system fiber optic infrastructure that you can go from any community in Jamaica to the next community. In terms of business, the cable operators will be able to access the fiber from any community and be able to do business in another parish or another community. So it, it is in, in instances are those um, companies that require high speed um, connection to, to, to for, their, for their services. The infrastructure, the supporting infrastructure will be there for you to do business in any community across the country. So, I think that pretty much is the presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Sonnison. Yeah. We will have questions at the end, eh? So, you just hold all your questions. And now I'm going to invite Mr. Keith Duncan to speak to us. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, all. Good morning, morning. Uh, I think Jimmy is on a path, is on a solid path. Mike, I, I heard you and I know you're the hard working, leading the NBA driving this project. Your knowledge is immense about what exists in Jamaica and the possibilities. So I'd like to acknowledge you and your NWA team, sir, for this. Um, you know, um, Honorable Minister Vaz, Permanent Secretary, the hard-working Carol Palmer, um, special invited guests, Paris, uh, Joaquin, other members of the MSET team, and those um, online. Um, Mr. M Mr. Michael Leachin, who is a big part of why I'm here today, um, I'd like to acknowledge you for your leadership, sir. Uh, Honorable Minister Vaz, I serve at your pleasure. I was not looking for any more national responsibilities at this point in time. But I gave it deep thought when you made the request of me, along with Mike Leachin, to serve as chairman of the National Information and Communication Technology Advisory Council. I, along with this council, We'll do our best with the mandate that we have, which is to advise you, the portfolio minister, on national ICT policies, internet policy, the regulatory framework for, for telecommunications, strategic direction for ICTs within the government, and all aspects of telecommunications with direct consumer and user impacts. I take this role and make this commitment on of my time and efforts because the Ministry of Science, Energy, and Technology is mission critical to Jamaica's recovery from COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic, but also to building a sustainable, productive, inclusive, equitable, innovative, competitive, and growing Jamaican economy. So when we look at broadband penetration, we are characterized by having not only low level of penetration for mobile and fixed broadband, but Jamaica lags behind our region. 
of total mobile broadband penetration, 4G, 645,000, March 2020, population penetration, 23.6%. Average penetration in the region, 102.5%. Total fixed broadband subscribers, 348,000, household, household penetration, 36.2%, Average penetration in the region, 45.5%. We have work to do, the hard work in Mike. Now, broadband is a critical enabler for the transformation of the Jamaican economy. Jamaica's productivity has declined for decades, and broadband penetration is a game changer that can cut across the areas which have led to this decline in productivity. We have seen Dominican Republic double their productivity in 20 years. We have seen that Trinidad and Barbados continue to increase their productivity while Jamaica's productivity has declined over the past 20 years. Technology is a key driver of productivity and without broadband penetration to a critical mass, the efficiency and competitiveness of our economies and Jamaica will continue to flounder along with our low growth rate, averaging 1% for decades. Broadband is, is important to human capital development. 65% or 808,000 of our 1.269 million members of Jamaica's labor is untrained. 808,000 of 1.269 million people in our labor force is untrained. And as a result of our people not being trained, our GDP per capita is US 5,400 per person. That we are one third of what it is in Barbados and Trinidad. Through broadband connectivity and technology, we can disrupt education in providing solutions, technology solutions, to deliver low cost and efficient training to deal with this gap and deficit that we have as a country. Because human capital development is critical to increasing the wealth and the purchasing power of people, and technology again is a great enabler. Crime continues to be a major drag on Jamaica's growth and productivity. With our murder rate continuing to be at about 49 per 100,000 as at the end of 2019, which is two and a half times the Latin American Car and Caribbean average. Through broad broadband penetration, we can connect our police stations, our courthouse, our courthouses. We can widely deploy the Jamaica Eye solution, which you spoke about, uh, Mike. Equip our security forces with modern technology solutions to fight crime. Ease of doing business or productivity. While Jamaica in the last seven years has improved the world or ranking in the World Bank in the World Bank index of ease of doing business, we have improved to 71 from 95 in, a, in within the last uh, seven years from 2013 forward when we embarked on the economic reform program. It is still, however, still too difficult to do business in Jamaica. I'll give one example. And this is, a, this is one, one criteria which is measured by the World Bank. Jamaica ranks 124 out of the 190 countries that are measured in the ease of paying taxes. 124 out of 190, and we are ranked 71 in the world in ease of doing business. That's a great opportunity for us for disruption again. So it's, it still remains too difficult to do business in Jamaica in the private and public sector, and broadband and technology can be a game changer, a disruptor, and move us further up the scale of ease of doing business in, in, in the ease of doing business rankings and stimulate domestic and foreign investments in Jamaica because it's easy to do business with Jamaica. So having Jamaicans online will improve access to public services, including education, health, and social security benefits. We all saw the issues that were during COVID-19 with people lining up at remittance companies, etc. 
This will improve efficiency as the country moves away from manual processiveness and slow responsiveness in both the private and public sector. And the cost to provide services will also be reduced as well as the cost to access. So from a private sector perspective, we are clear on the benefits of broadband penetration in terms of increasing competitiveness, productivity, while increasing the purchase power of our average citizen, increasing the wealth of our average citizen and our country, enabling them to purchase more goods and services from the private sector to drive job creation and grow our economy. So the PSOJ is, we are walking the talk, and we have partnered with the Ministry of Education to close the digital divide in executing a device for every child in the initiative, bridging the digital divide. So the, part, the PSOJ partnered with the NCB Foundation to have developed, who have developed a Connect a Child Jamaica Portal.com to facilitate school directed donations. And NCB was the first uh, to step up with $50 million towards this program. And JMB Foundation stepped up with 10 because our pocket is not as deep as NCB. <laughs> the private sector will continue to put in established public private sector partnerships to, to move Jamaica forward to a digital economy. So we're done. As Jamaica moves to make this major investment to drive universal access, it's important that, that this broadband initiative, as the minister has outlined and the PS has outlined, requires a national approach, all hands on deck. The government of Jamaica, ministers, departments, and agencies, the opposition, and I heard the minister reach out across the aisle yesterday and say, we want you in the process. The telecoms, the technology providers, civil society, multilaterals, and all stakeholders, stakeholders must be engaged in a transparent and structured process which determines how partnerships are decided, where investments are made, and how public goods are distributed. Of course, expanding the broadband backbone of the country is only an, an enabler which is projected to cost us US $240 million and which may turn out to be the single largest ICT investment to be made in the country over the medium term. We have to ensure that the public and private sector will be, who will be making this investment can realize a social and commercial return on this investment by ensuring that the consumer that is our citizens, business, government, are trained and ready to purchase at affordable rates and up the technology using the technology productivity. So we, you can't be providing and enabling and be people them that can, are, not, are not trained and ready um, to use this broadband when, we, when it is rolled out. It has to be rolled out at affordable rates such that people can buy it and, uh, and it's called the adoption, the, the high level of adoption that must be in place. So in, in an environment of declining fiscal space and scarce resources, our citizens need to be assured that there will be oversight and a transparent process in place that will guide this major investment, ensuring that Jamaica will receive maximum value on this investment for all its citizens. So in closing, the National Information and Com Communications Technology Advisory Council, which I chair, looks forward to supporting our passionate, focused, and inclusive, and driven minister, Vaz, who have a whole lot of, and the PS, the efficient, driven, permanent secretary, and their MSET team, and we will play our part in advancing Jamaica to a digital society. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Duncan. And now I must invite the Honorable Michael Lee Chin to address us. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Minister Vaz, uh, Paris, International Development Partners, Keith, P.S. Carroll, Joaquin, Press, welcome. I'm excited to be here today, very excited. You know, 
Well, initially, when I told my brother Wayne Chen about Minister Vaz's goals of making the benefits of the internet accessible and affordable to all Jamaicans so that our people don't fall on the wrong side of the digital divide, locally and globally. Secondly, make our digital infrastructure more resilient, bringing the benefits of connectivity to all the parishes and at the same time achieve total inclusion of those who can least afford it. Thirdly, improvement of the provision of public services to schools, health centers, police stations, and community centers. Fourthly, contribute to the digital economy, the productivity and job creation and GDP. And, and in terms of GDP, for every 10% increase in broadband penetration, we should observe an increment of 3.2% in GDP growth and 2.6% in productivity, as Keith mentioned, we're lagging behind, and the creation of direct and indirect jobs. Additionally, making Jamaica a regional hub, a regional hub with the ultimate goal of attracting investments and generating a digital innovation ecosystem that moves the frontier of our economy. When I told Wayne, Chen, my brother, all of these objectives that Minister Vaz uh, has, Wayne's, Wayne's response was the following. Well, if you guys can achieve that, there will be a statue built for Minister Vaz in Hero's Circle when, when, as I, when this is achieved. And ladies and gentlemen, it will be achieved. This national broadband project is, as Keith just mentioned, is the single most important project we as a country have embarked on to improve the quality of life of our children and grandchildren. So why is this important? Well, every developed country is based on this pyramid. Agriculture at the base, manufacturing above that, and services at the apex. If we were to measure Jamaica against that framework, we have not developed our agricultural base, nor our manufacturing base. So by default, services, it has to be. We have one chance, services, it has to be. We therefore have to be relentless in, in making sure we have the infrastructural base of broadband over which we can build a proper ICT industry. So this is a national imperative. Early in my career, a very successful man once said to me, Mike, you want to be successful? Yes, sir. How do we do that? Well, it's simple, Mike. Success is 10% strategy, 90% implementation. So this team of implementers are focused on not only strategy, that's important, but execution, execution, execution. So in terms of strategy and execution, we have the A team comprised of Minister Baz, Minister Favel Williams, PS Carol Palmer, Chief Technical Director Joaquin Murray, Keith Duncan, Wayne Chen, Paris Lee Ayi, Antonio Zabalikos Garcia, and myself as chairman. A great combination of representatives from both the public and the private sector. And yes, Antonio, you're now a Jamaican because your heart, the passion that you show towards this project, only a Jamaican could, could show that passion and heart. So you are inducted into our country, Antonio. You're a beautiful person. So if you are a fly on the wall at any of our meetings, and we have meetings before, before now, we're having them a couple of times a week. Doesn't matter the time, whether it's Sunday evening, Saturday evening, Monday, you'd be, you'd be impressed by the passion you see from the team of people I just mentioned. Their commitment and the energy, 
this team bring to the weekly meetings. You'll be confident by virtue of what you see if you're flying the wall that Jamaica's future is in great hands. I personally am very proud that this team of purpose-driven Jamaicans are working one, singularly to one goal, implement execution on this project. So what can we expect in the next while? Well, phase one, the foundation. What are we to expect in six months? So I'm gonna lay it out quite clearly. So it puts all of us on the line. We're gonna make sure everything is transparent so you know what milestones will be achieved and when. All of us, public sector, private sector, to account. So in the next six months, what do we expect to achieve? Number one, description of the project concept and pre-feasibility study for a national broadband connectivity plan. And by the way, that's done. Number two, identification of formulae and formulation of the technical specs related to the digital infrastructure projects. These technical specifications will form the basis for future tenders. And by the way, that is done. Number three, identification of the governance model that will assign mandates and define responsibilities across the government to coordinate the digital agenda in the country. Remember I said these were the first six months that we expect to accomplish. By the way, that is done. Fourthly, improve investment environment for digital infrastructure through diligent review in accordance with best international practices of relevant legislations, such as rights of way, universal service fund, and spectrum. And by the way, that is done. In collabor collaboration with all the parties involved, design of the action plan for moving forward. And by the way, that is done. Phase two, transition from an analog to digital. What is expected in the next 12 months? Here we go. At least one big tender process for development of a digital infrastructure launched and awarded. Number two, design of, design of and preparation for future bidding processes completed. Three, what do we expect for the next 12 months? Investment environment for digital infrastructure uh, uh, improved through the amendments of identified legislations such as the rights of way, universal service fund and spectrum. Phase three, digital transformation. What to expect at the end of 24 months? Number one, improvement of connectivity of public institutions such as schools going from 16% currently to 61%. Hospitals going from 18% to 59% at the minimum. Police stations going from 32% to 70%. Community centers going from 15% to 62%. What can we expect in the next 12 months? Number two, increased usage of digital services and applications such as e-gov services across public institutions and society in general. Number three, transformation of our economy to a more digital economy, which will impact GDP, productivity, and jobs. Now, my favorite part, my goal, is my dream, my aspiration, is to see every single Jamaican own a piece of the rock. Because only when you own can you create wealth. So in terms of ownership, we will be striving to have the national broadband infrastructure owned by the private sector through a publicly listed SPV. We want it to be publicly traded, so pension funds and every single Jamaican can own a part of the national broadband infrastructure. Jamaican owning this critical infrastructure will allow us to control the, the capital investment needed to maintain this asset to the standard necessary to be globally competitive in a digital world. Every Jamaican will be able to share 
in the benefits and ownership of such a critical asset. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a project we have embar embarked on, and I'm confident that with the implementation team that we have put together, we'll bring it home. It is our chance to make Jamaica a reference center in the region and show the world that when we all move in the same direction without losing sight of what is ahead on the horizon, we can do great things and we'll, that will outlast us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Michael Lee Chin. Thank you for being with us as you always are, not, not, notwithstanding the fact that you are not physically present in Jamaica. Technology makes us occupy one space, even though we are physically apart by miles. Thank you very much. And now, I present to you Honorable Darrell Vaz, MP, Minister of Science, Energy, and Technology, to address us. Thank you very much, PS. Honorable Michael Leachin, Chairman of the National Broadband Task Force. Sir Keith Duncan, President of the Private Sector, but more importantly today, Chairman of the National Information and Communication Technology Advisory Council, Chairman of the various boards, newly appointed under the Ministry, most of whom I suspect have joined us virtually. I want to also make mention of the advisor to the Minister on Energy, Mr. Wayne Chen, and Advisor on Science, Mr. Paris A. Jr. Let me also recognize Antonio Garcia from the IDB, who has provided unbelievable technical support to the Ministry in shaping the broadband strategy. Also, Mr. Michael Saunderson, members of the MSET team led by the PS, members of the press, and of course, Jamaicans all, some of whom are listening. Yesterday I outlined to Parliament and by extension the people of Jamaica, the government's broadband strategy for the achievement of universal access to broadband. This morning I'll speak on a few other matters as well as the broadband strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, it is fundamentally important that as a government pursues interventions to scale up economic recovery, transparency and trust, and I'll repeat it, transparency and trust must guide our actions. We are signaling our commitment to those principles from the get-go. That is why we have assembled some of the brightest and best minds in the country to provide leadership at the board level for the entities that fall under my ministry. Cabinet has approved and appointed the full slate of boards, the list of which is provided in the addendum to my statement, but I will mention the chairpersons and deputy chairpersons where applicable. And let me just pause to indicate that it has not missed me in any way that this ministry is the make it or break it for me. Despite the fact that some may think that I'm not that smart. Absolutely. And I'm very aware that the ministry that I have the honor to lead in the past has had some negative publicity. And therefore, it is even more important that I stress the fact that the board appointments that I have made are based on probity and performance 
and integrity and honesty because the fact is that that is what the country expects and demands. So for the Petrogem Ethanol Limited, Mr. Kevin Richards is the chairman. For the Jamaica Aircraft Refueling Services, JARS, Mr. Elvi. For the Jamaica Public Service Company, for the Minority Shareholders Chairman, Mr. Danville Walker, along with Mr. Dennis Morgan as the other appointed government director. Mr. Edward Gabidon as chairman of the Spectrum Management Authority and Mrs. Camille Facey as a deputy. Mr. Professor Felix akin Lajo, the chairman for the Postal Corporation of Jamaica and Ms. Rochelle Cameron as a deputy chair. For e-learning, Mr. Mitrisiaga, chairman, and Ms. Deborah Newland, deputy. That's for e-learning Jamaica. For PCJ, to wind up the entity, is Mr. Richard Francesco from the ministry. For eGov Jamaica Limited, Dr. Gunjan Mansing and Mrs. Jacqueline, Mrs. Jacqueline Sharp, deputy, formerly of BNS. For the Universal Service Fund, Mr. Justin Moran, Chairman, and Mr. Maurice Barnes, Deputy Chairman. For Petrojam Limited, Mr. Chen Chair, and Mr. Mitrisiaga, Deputy Chair. And for ISENSE, International Center of Environment and Nuclear Science, Dr. Paris Leo Ayi, as well as Scientific Research Council. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the scope of boards that fall under my portfolio responsibility. And I think that all of Jamaica can look and feel proud that we have competent persons to carry out the business of these agencies under this ministry. Visionary leadership of these entities is important as a country faces a race for the economic recovery and the gamut task of strategically repositioning the economy for a post-pandemic era. Let me touch on Petrojam, which obviously has some outstanding matters of public interest in relation to the Petrojam public consultation. Members of the press will recall that the government received a report from a review committee led by Mr. Christopher Zaka into the operations to Jam Limited. A commitment was made to conduct public consultations to garner the view of stakeholders. The ministry engaged Capri to carry out the consultations which were delayed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The ministry received a report on the outcome of the consultations which must now go to cabinet for decision making. I will have more to say in January as I do not wish to preempt the cabinet. But let me just say that with a new board just being appointed after the recent uh, formation of a new government, obviously it would be prudent to have a new board in place so they too could review the report prior to it going to cabinet. So you have my assurance that this matter will be a priority in the new calendar year. In relation to the National Broadband Initiative, yesterday I outlined to Parliament the road to universal broadband coverage for Jamaica. This morning you heard the Chairman of the National Broadband Task Force, Mr. Leachin, and the National Information and Technology Advisory Council, Mr. Keith Duncan, as well as Mr. Mike Saunderson from the National Works Agency. You'd have heard the passion you would have heard the excitement in their voices. So you know that we are really revved up in relation to this. The government will be making the largest single investment in the ICT infrastructure in the country. Yesterday I gave in Parliament an estimated cost of $237 million for the development of the national broadband. Let me break, down, break that down based on the phases and the implementation. It will cost 
20 to 35 million U.S. to bring connectivity to unserved and underserved areas. This will contribute to the deployment of more than 1,500 kilometers of optical fiber as an immediate response in light of COVID-19. This aspect of the rollout is to ensure that we have the continuity of learning for the student population. The Universal Service Fund is providing $20 million for a second dedicated channel for PBCJ for 24-7 educational content. The USF will also make available the community access points to support tech in educating and distance learning. The last mile deployment to the community centers, police stations, health centers, local municipalities is estimated to cost between 40 million and 100 million US dollars. More than 1,000 public locations will be connected. Coverage of these points will be between a low of 59% for health centers to a high of 100% for local municipalities. This deployment will have a social focus with the aim of connecting not just public institutions, but Jamaicans in every nook and cranny. All of this will require a significant environment to include cybersecurity and critical infrastructure protection, a data strategy, policy, legislative and regulatory framework. Jamaica will need the tremendous support of the international community and will seek to leverage the knowledge expertise and experience of our donor community to ensure that we are moving with speed and focus. So where are we? We have the key pairs on board for the immediate COVID-19 response phase. Key public, key public sector entities are working with private sector providers to leverage available ICT infrastructure to connect underserved areas. This is a critical component of the COVID-19 plan as you heard earlier. For the medium and long-term phase, we have pulled together an oversight team led by Michael Lee Chin and a core technical team with broad multi-sectoral representation that will focus on the technical aspects of the development and implementation of the strategy. The donor community is on board with a strong desire to assist Jamaica to achieve the last mile community. We are in a race not just against time, but for our lives and livelihoods. As I said yesterday in Parliament, Jamaica fixed broadband penetration is 11.65%, while mobile penetration is at 59.76%. For the OECD countries, those figures are 33% and 96% respectively. Jamaica cannot compete with the rest of the world given its current ICT infrastructure. The economy will not recover fast enough given the current capabilities. It, it has been demonstrated in other jurisdictions that deploying appropriate digital infrastructure technology can have a transformational effect on traditional industries as well as a broader economy. The government is also of the firm belief <clears throat> that the investment in broadband will spur competition in the telecommunications sector, driving down costs and improving services. I undertake to keep the nation abreast of the progress that we make in the implementation of the broadband strategy in regular updates, as Mike said earlier, as every Jamaican will be impacted in this development and therefore we want to partner with everybody. There were some questions, almost 16 questions that were raised after my presentation yesterday. Some of them require detailed research, but I have given an undertaking, and I will say it publicly, that I will table the responses to those questions in Parliament in the new parliamentary year after the Christmas vacation. Let me say to you how excited I am, and the fact of the matter is that politician and a good minister must always surround himself with the best talent that is available in the country. And I can say without hesitation that today, with the guidance of my peers, I have been able to name one of the strongest set of chairpersons for the various agencies that this country has ever been able to do persons who are making great sacrifices, who have their empires 
massive businesses to run, but are patriotic enough to know that they need a country order to be able to enjoy the fruit of their successes and to say that I look forward to leading this charge with the competent assistance that I'm getting both from within my ministry, from my team, and of course in partnership with those who have offered themselves to serve for the betterment of Jamaica. I wish for everyone here and all who is on Zoom and all who are listening a peaceful and safe holiday and I implore you to follow the COVID protocols because if you do that, we have a better chance of recovering quicker so that we can get on to building a better Jamaica. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. Now you've heard from us, and now we invite members of the press to pose their questions, and we will do our best to answer. No questions? Questions. Must be questions. I have I have a question here that was messaged to me. P.S. Yes, Minister. I'll read it. It's from TBJ. Mm -hmm. Could you provide an update on the third cellular license that the government is planning to issue? How far along in the process? is the government. I can say maybe some technical glitches. You don't see? Can you bring him on, please? You see it? It's hard for me to, to believe that with such a Have important... Uh, there must be questions. So I, eh? Mr. Graham, go ahead with your you, question. You can go ahead. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Minister, good morning. Thank you very much. And um, thanks for acknowledging me. Uh, the team, I agree, um, is a strong team. And um, I must commend you for the team that you have put together. Uh, I have uh, two questions. One, I think you have answered somewhat, and, um, but I'll ask them nevertheless. Yesterday in Parliament, you spoke about the PC, PBCJ to build its own network. Why not give everyone a fair opportunity to respond to the RFP? Um, that would include the CVM, the TVJ, the Red TVs, um, and, and others. So that's question one. Uh, two, I think this one probably goes more to the chairman, Lee Chin. Uh, good morning to you, sir. Uh, I agree with the concept of every Jamaican owning a part of this company, the vehicle that will use to take broadband to everyone. Uh, but shouldn't it be that uh, the company is charged with a responsibility to roll out 5G in Jamaica both from a fiber perspective and from a 5G perspective. As you're aware, 5G versus 4G um, is night and day. Um, difference is not the same as from 2G to 4G. Uh, but shouldn't it be that, that this uh, company has the entire responsibility um, to do that? 
because I, I fully agree that every Jamaican has to be on board. We have to get to this digital space. We can't afford to leave any Jamaican behind, and especially the poor and in the rural areas that has no service. We, we need to find a way to, to bring them service because even if they have a gadget, they don't have service. Thank you very much. Mike, you want, to, you want to respond to the second question first, and then I'll ask uh, Mike or Joaquin to deal with the first question. Mike Leachin? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead with PVCJ since you're ready for that. And just to say, uh, Hugh, that, 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 that uh, there's, there, we are in a collaborative uh, approach, and therefore it is discussions and, 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 and advice will be sought from all. So your question in relation to PBCJ and bringing in the other private uh, 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 players is, is something that can be looked at. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, yes, Mr. Graham. I think um, the PBCJ um, project should be seen more as an upgrade from analog to digital, not so much as trying to build a whole brand new network. I think um, the country is at this stage you know, where it needs to have um, digital high resolution content from the PBCJ broadcasting system. The current system that they have now uh, is unable to do that. And I think it's more of a quality um, um, decision to, to be able to, for example, in, 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 in the case of students, um, PBCJ can only, with just one channel, have a limited capacity to put um, educational content on one channel. But with a digital system, you could put multiple channels of um, educational um, classes um, on a 24-7 basis. So I think it is more in terms of an upgrade. Thanks, Mr. Mike Leachin, you want to respond to the... Mike is there? Yes. Go Sorry. ahead, Mr. Leachin. No, you unmute, Mike. Unmute. Unmute, Mike. My, 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 you need a new technology minister, you know. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay, no. No, I was saying I need to be unmuted. <laughs> I can't <laughs> unmute myself. <laughs> anyway, a very, very good question. You see, the problem is, the problem why Jamaicans, we all have to own that the national broadband infrastructure is because, you know, currently, if the incumbents... Uh, are not focused on Jamaica. Capital will not come to Jamaica, right? And therefore, our, our development, or future, will be stymied. And we can't afford that. So we're dependent on the incumbents to say, yes, we will put capital in Jamaica to make sure that Jamaica's uh, technology uh, infrastructure is global, world-class, and, and, and continue to be world class. So I don't think that's happening right now. So therefore, taking, putting the infrastructure in a publicly traded company owned by Jamaicans, we take control of how much money we spend, when we spend it, because it is our, uh, our future. Uh, so that is the philosophy behind why we have to do this. Now, once the company is, is established and up and running, then it's for the board and the management to decide uh, what it, 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 uh, how far uh, we should go, whether 5G or 6G. But that's not for us to do now. It's for us just to lay the foundation so this can happen. Does that answer your question, Minister? Absolutely, sir, absolutely. Uh so um, ju just a comment. Well, I, I thank you for that. And I also thank you, Minister Bass, for the invitation, the open invitation to contribute to this very important um, digitization of Jamaica that will move us forward. And um, as I said, my, my main concern is that since 5G is a future, whether it's fiber or whether it is... Um, 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 over air, satellite, cellular. Um, I'm just thinking it's a, it's a very valuable asset or it would be a very valuable asset 
to this company or to this vehicle and uh, um, for them to, to roll out. So, so, yes, thank you very much. I, I just want to add to, to what Mike said uh, for your purposes, you, that, that the Broadband Task Force has already had dialogue in relation to this matter with Flo last week, Friday, in our meeting, and this week, Friday, we'll have Digicel. So we are in a consultative mode and a collaborative mode where we, we are transparent in terms of what our plans are and taking on board suggestions from them and see how we can work together because at the end of the day, it will benefit everybody, including the very providers, current providers. Yes, indeed. Um, Thanks. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Minister Vass. My name is Professor Phyllis Akinladejo. Um, <clears throat> I just want to make this uh, simple contribution that uh, we must not put at the back burner the issue of security, which is a test threat to digital environment. Why we are focusing on the benefit of you know, our investment, which is a laudable one, as I have put in my chart, and I fully support and endorse the move and that we should go full speed ahead. We could also consult with the academia in terms of the new, you know, uh, technology that the hackers, you know, all those people that are doing intrusion detection to break into platforms and, you know, you can just bring down our system within seconds. We have to, at the same time, in parallel, you know, look into some of the, you know, nuances and things that we have to put in place for that to sit into us as we are doing Absolutely. all this. Absolutely. Part of the system as well. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Any other hands up? Chris Deering. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Good, good, good morning, Minister, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just seeking some clarity on what uh, Mr. Sanderson just mentioned in terms of PBCJ being just a, an upgrade of digital, going from analog to digital. What he presented was an actual transmission network, not an upgrade of content development. So I would like some clarity as to whether or not there's going to be a, an open, transparent um, public tender for the um, digital uh, transmission network and distribution and this TV uh, broadcast network that is being contemplated by the government. Yeah, there, there will be a, a public tender on the, um, the construction of the um, digital broadcasting system. It will be an open process. Thank you. All right. Um, and may I, may I also say, Mr. Daring, that um, we intend after our meeting with Digicel on Friday to bring all persons, all sector interests within the technology space to meet with us, to hear what the challenges are, what the, probably the vision is, where people see themselves contributing, and um, see how we take it forward, because we are as all our speakers have said, we are operating a very transparent process. And the only way we're gonna get national buy-in and cooperation from everyone is if we operate with an inclusive approach. So you can be assured, um, perhaps next week before Christmas, we are going to be calling that meeting. Good to hear, thank you. Question. I think this one is for Mr. Saunderson. What will happen to the existing analog broadcasters? You can answer. That's, that's not you, Mike. In relation to PBCJ? Broadcasters generally. That's, that's part of the conversation I think we will need to have with everybody next week. Um, because everyone will have to start modernizing and moving into the digital space. So that's, that's part of the conversation and consultation we will need to do. And there's a question. Someone wants to know 
how are we drawing on the expertise of persons in um, academia? They are on board. We have several persons from academia on our boards and also on the task force. And I may, might I dare to say, if persons wish to volunteer their services, they can send uh, an email, and we'll see how we take that on board as well. Okay, that's it. All the other comments are congratulating the minister and the ministry on the initiative. So, so let me just say in, in closing that I just want to reassure the industry players that we are wide open for consultation, for advice, and for collaboration. Nothing is more successful than when you have a unified approach. And that is what we are setting out to do. We may have to agree to disagree in some cases, but all persons of that have interest will be heard open door policy, and the fact of the matter is, as I said before, the opposition has been invited to be a part of this initiative by vir virtue of being on the task force so that they can get information and that the ministry is available for any information that they may require from time to time on any of the subject matters, whether it be science, energy, or technology. And that is how we will build a better Jamaica and a unified Jamaica. So thank you very much to the PS and the team, to all my board chairmen and board members, and we have a lot of work to do in a very short time. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Our press briefing is at an end. Thank you.